You got to wait on that girl to grow up. Yes, she's going to act a fool. Yes, she's going to do stupid things. Yes, she might come home pregnant. Yes, she might get on drugs. Yes, your heart is broken. Yes, you feel like you're a disappointment. Yes, you feel like a failure. At your most vulnerable age, you feel like I failed. I put everything I had in you and look at you. And as I sat and watched this auditorium fill up with people, I then get a panned out view of this church being burned down. The people were essentially rioting. I mean, they burned this place down. They took the doors off, they were taking the windows off. This place was burned down to the ground. Both of the sons are gay. They are, and I don't say that as a dig. I don't say that to shame them. I'm just telling you the facts, okay? The Lord was saying that in America, Christians love pedophiles that it's the pedophiles they idolize and they love. He said that they're rapists, which means that they take sex by force from people who don't want to give it. Brothers, shut up. They can't see it till they see it. They can't know it till they know it. They can't be it till they be it. They can't see it just like you couldn't see it when you were their age. They can't see it either. And you have to, the Bible says in patience, you possess your soul, you possess your mind, you keep yourself from a nervous breakdown. When you develop patience, you have to know that you shall bring forth fruit in your own season and your leaf shall not wither and whatsoever you do shall prosper. But it's not the boy's season. You got to wait on that girl to grow up. Yes, she's going to act a fool. Yes, she's going to do stupid things. Yes, she might come home pregnant. Yes, she might get on drugs. Yes, your heart is broken. Yes, you feel like you're a disappointment. Yes, you feel like a failure. At your most vulnerable age, you feel like I failed. I put everything I had in you and look at you, but you got to wait. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel like I'm preaching. I'm preaching to somebody today. See, we have lost our ability to wait. If the marriage don't work out in the first three years, we're out of there. If we're not happy in the first five years, we're out of there. You don't understand how long it takes for two different people from two different worlds and two different family backgrounds to mesh together and figure out how to make this work. You ain't going to be happy every day. I can't make you happy. I'm trying to make me happy. I don't even know what I want. How do you expect me to know what you want? I don't know what you want, and I can't make you happy. He waited, not knowing if he would ever see him alive again not knowing if the ambulance had just passed by was carrying my son, my child, my wife, my future, whatever it is you're waiting on. I'm, I'm wondering if it's going to get back. Is it ever going to get back? Is it ever going to come home? It's not just waiting, it's worrying. It's worrying and waiting and worrying and waiting. See, the worry is the torment that the devil leaves with the waiter so that you can't get comfortable in the waiting. That's why you have to wait on the Lord and have your strength renewed so you can fight off the worry, all the images that come to your mind, all the coulda, woulda, shoulda, all the this might happen, that might happen, this might die, that might die, that, that this might happen. And there he is where his father can't help him, where his father father can't reach him, where his father can't touch him, and he's already spent everything that his father put in him, and now he's down to nothing. And that's when we find out what you're really made of, when you're down to nothing, when all hell has broken loose in your life, and it looks like you'll never get back up again. That's 
when we find out, are you a man? I don't know you're a man while you got money. I know you're a man when you're broke. I know you're a man when you're backed in a quarter and you're shoved to the wall. And if you don't fight your way out, you won't get out. That's when I find out what you're really made of. Both of the sons are gay. They are. And I don't say that as a dig. I don't say that to shame them. I'm just telling you the facts. Okay. Now, the sons, one is darker skin. The darker skin son is the one who was caught in Keys Park many years ago. Uh, my mentor was a part of that scandal. Uh, when I say she was a part of it, I mean, she was a member of his church at that time. Uh, it was on the news, Channel 8 News down there in Dallas. It was a mess. I mean, that too was a devastation for her. Um, but the the son, the darker skinned son, was the one caught in Keys Park. Keys Park is on Keys Boulevard there in Dallas. Um, and it's about 15 minutes from the church. Okay. So um, now those two sons, they are not the biological children of T of Thomas. Okay. When before Sarita was a teen mom. Okay. She had both of the boys when she was uh, a young woman. And um, sometime later, I don't know if it was years. I don't know the time frame of between her having and her meeting Thomas, that part of their story, I don't know. But one of the great things that made her fall in love with Thomas was that he accepted her two boys. And yes, he did later adopt them. So he's the man that raised them because I don't know anything about their biological father. Y'all, I don't know who he is. That's the part I can't say. Um, but, but yes. And again, as I shared with you on part one, I'm not worried about being sued. I'm not. Um, I have seen both the sons. I've talked with one of the sons. When I say talk with, I don't mean had some extensive conversation, but I remember without going into the details, he brought who, I mean, we knew it was his boyfriend, but he brought his boyfriend to an event that I was a part of running. And I remember he said to me, now he did not know me, but I just was there, you know, and he said to me, I'm about to bring my friend. He referred to him as his friend. This is the darkest skin son again in here and just kind of watch over him, make sure nobody bothers him and da, da, da. And I said, oh, okay, I will, I will. And, um, yeah. And I, I tried to, you know, just, you know, and so, and just to be clear, uh, this was a class. It was an event. It was a, it was an educational type event and, um, he brought him there. So, you know, now let me share something else. Um, my mentor told me, and I'll never forget this. Uh, I had come to visit the state for business and we were at Luby's, L-U-B-Y apostrophe as we had went to Luby's, which is something down there in Texas and um, kind of like a golden corral type place. <clears throat> and so um, I'll never forget. She was telling me that a friend of her to hers told her um, that at their home, there was a time when the Jakes lived near what is not white rock lake in dallas okay they had a home they used to have a home over there and she told me her friend was part of this group of people that had gone to the house but i don't know how many sessions they had but this was a time as i said earlier where people kind of saw homosexuality differently especially in the church and so they believed that it was an evil spirit and it could be cast out and so she was telling me that the friend had said that they had had a few sessions at the jake's home where they were trying to cast the devil out of these two boys. And she, I remember, I'll never forget. She said to me, she said, and, and they said every time they would get to a point where they thought they were going to cast him out, Jake's would leave the room. Why? I don't know what he was leaving room for. I don't know. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Now um, let's see what else do I want to share before I let you guys go on this part too. Cora, Cora. Yes. You remember last year when um, all the stuff was going on with Michelle Loud and the allegation of Cora taking her baby and so on and so forth. Remember, you know, and this did break my heart, but I couldn't say anything because I didn't feel free to tell it. But, you know, so much is about to come out. I think all of us who've known things, there's no point in trying to hold on to this stuff. It is what it is, you know, and people are who they are for good or for bad. So a lot of people were making fun of Cora and they were like, what's wrong with Cora? Is she special or something? And that really hurt me because what people don't know is Cora does have a learning disability. Now, which one it is, I don't know. That part I can't tell you. But how I know this is because my mentor, as I said earlier in part one, she was very well connected in the community. She was a former educator. There was a woman 
whose first name starts with a K. So Miss K, who used to drive, and I'm saying this because I want anyone listening to know I can't be sued. She used to drive a blue sports car, okay? She worked in the corporate world at one point before she went out full-time in ministry. Um, She had a car accident that injured her back, and her back was injured for some time. But Mrs. K um, ran a program at the church. It was hers. Her and her sister ran this program that was for women. And it was kind of sort of like you could say, if I could put you in, in mind of something like a finishing type school, but it was a class. It wasn't a school, it was a class. And you would graduate from this class. Now, later, Sarita took that program and turned it into what they later called the debutante program for young girls. But that's not how it originally started. But that lady, Mrs. K, was also on the ground floor of the ministry, very connected to Sarita. And Sarita had commissioned Mrs. K to find a tutor for, for Cora. So Mrs. K, who my mentor was her advisor as well, called my mentor and she was saying, you know, we need to get a tutor for a core. Do you know anybody? Because, you know, like I said, she was a former educator and she did. She was able to connect them with a mentor, excuse me, a tutor for Cora. So now I'm not saying Cora's special needs. I don't know anything about that. But what I will say is that, yes, she has a learning disability. And so very often people are making fun of folks and they don't know what people have going on or things like that. And I feel like that's very cruel. And it's unnecessary. I don't feel like any of us who are commenting on these things have to make fun of people and do those things. I I don't think we have to take it that far. That in this dream, and Holy Spirit, you can't tell. I'm just not, I don't like to do name dropping, but I have to do this. I have to do this. The Lord is sick and he is tired and he is sick and tired. And I really just don't want, I don't want you to fall under the judgment that is to come because of your disobedience oh god so the lord shows me something about my own business and i said surely this is just one of those crazy dreams lord i can't wait to wake up this is i mean is this really like this is really what's going on here as i serve you this is really what's going on and the dream very quickly turns to a church. Now, the specific event of this church, like the, I guess the crazy thing about it was that this church was putting on a conference. So how it was told to me in the dream is that people were lured to this church. And as I sat and watched this auditorium fill up with people, I then get a panned out view of this church being burned down. The people were essentially rioting. I mean, they burned this place down. They took the doors off. They were taking the windows off. This place was burned down to the ground. And let's not say this place, let's not be, let's not be so vague. This place was the Potter's House, Dallas. And I don't, I don't think that I've ever heard the Lord call out a church directly and tell me to tell somebody much of anything now i have got and i like i said i i, I said i won't call names but i'm going i, I want to be on the lower side okay it has been a long time i watched a message and the lord tells me do not watch another message from this church some of the pastors in the church are actually preaching my word, but there's more going on behind the scenes that you don't know about. Stop watching the message. That was all the word that I got. And let me tell you, this was before any news of anything. And to be honest with you, I don't know all the news of everything going on. I just know that there is some rumblings, but I want to tell you that it's deeper than you even can believe. I will tell you that. Um, so yeah, a long time ago, I, f- I feel like it was like at the beginning of last year, God was like, don't watch another message. And I watched a beautiful sermon by Pastor Sarah. Beautiful as in it changed my life. And it was the last sermon that the Lord permitted me to watch. I have watched other sermons by Pastor Sarah. And two of them in particular, and they changed my life. But God then presses me and says, 
don't come back here and watch anything. And you know, just like our human selves, we say, well, why? Or everybody else is watching, why can't I watch? Or everybody else is, you know, getting fed from this house, why can't this house feed me? And God says, no. And as I begin to watch things, I begin to actually see things unfold in a, a pretty bad way. And I said, Lord, you're just when you speak. When you speak is right. There's no need for me to go around questioning what it is that you're saying. I might not understand why you're saying it, but your plans are to prosper me. So even though I don't know why you're saying it, I trust that you know exactly what you're talking about. And I tell you, like I said, the front part of that dream, and you're going to have to watch another video that we'll get to that. I'll only, I'll only tell as much of that as God says to, but this, he says, needs to be told to you. Because some of you guys tune in every single Sunday, every single Wednesday, Thursday, whenever they do messages, you travel and you go to every, I'm about to say concert, Lord help me, every conference, and I'm telling you this time, you'll be sadly mistaken. After you know the word of the Lord is, it's enough, and you continue to go, this time you'll be sorry. And these are not my words, this is the word of the Lord. The Lord told me, as I, like I said, was getting ready to do my work, I mean, how embarrassing to walk in there, drop your child off in the little daycare center, and then come back like five minutes later. So here I am. Look, here I am, just as mad as you, okay? The Lord says that the judgment that is on that house will be the same judgment that is on your house if you stack yourself up as an enemy against him as this church has. And I'm like, whoa, God. And you know what else he said? Because I think to myself, well, why did these messages transform my life? Why were these messages so good? And he says that he is merciful to his children, but there is still a requirement. And that means if I know that there are things going on underneath the surface and I continue to get up there and preach a message on bad soil, I know they had something come out say good soil, on bad soil, week after week after week after week, because of my own financial game, because of my own allegiance to my dad, to whoever, to my friend, I don't know, whoever the pastors are to the the pastor of that house because of my allegiance to them and because of my allegiance to them to you i no longer will follow what god says to do even though i know what you're doing is wrong i know you do some undercut underhanded stuff and no we don't put all of our business out there but i know that it's wrong yet i haven't said anything about it god says the same judgment that's on that house will be on your house And I, 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 I wish I could tell you that it's not true. I wish I could tell you that I, myself, myself, my family, my husband, my children haven't experienced curses, judgment up on our house for things that we have done. Just because you don't know the punishment because you haven't read your Bible because you don't know that there is a punishment for some of the things that you do that you participate in. I want to tell you that there is. And when you make yourself an ally with someone who God has declared an enemy, you have best watch out. And the Lord says that if you keep on, you continue on, you continue to watch, you continue to tune in, you continue to amen, you even people who have come out with stuff so people who are victims whatever however i don't know i don't care i am just speaking what the lord has said to tell you people are coming out with stuff and you're saying those people are liars those people are liars and i'm still going to participate in this god says that the same judgment that will come up on that house will come up on yours And in this season, if you can tell, this is really not the season that you want to be under judgment. As America herself is under judgment and literally going down into the drain, financial ruins, people are literally losing their minds and losing their hope. And as people lose their hope, they lose their mind because they're not grounded in anything. As all that goes on, the last thing you want to be is an enemy of God. And you keep sowing your money and sowing your time and making yourself and 
allied with them and an enemy of God, it just, it just won't, it won't go over well. That's all I have to tell you. I don't have anything. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to say more than was revealed to me. This was the, and I'm not going to say all the campuses. I don't know anything about that. All I'm saying is when I saw it in the dream, the Lord said specifically, it was the Potter's house, Dallas. And like I said, I've never before, I've never before even deemed it necessary to come on here shouting anybody's name. Um, but some of you are so silly that I guess the Lord wants to make it plain because you're like, oh, it may, it may be that person. I could watch that person, but not this. Perhaps we just had to make it a bit plain. Perhaps so. So as always, I, don't don't ask me no questions about this. I probably am going to turn the comments off on this one. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. What God began to reveal on November 11th, 2022, as we were praying for children, is information about the pedophile mafia in the church in the United States. The Lord was accusing the American church in particular, but you can expand this word to just talk about any church anywhere and any bunch of Christians anywhere that does this. The Lord was saying that in America, Christians love pedophiles, that it's the pedophiles they idolize and they love. He said that they're rapists, which means that they take sex by force from people who don't want to give it. We all know what a rapist is when we see them on TV, but we go blind, or at least millions of us go blind. When the rapist is wearing a collar and has a title like elder, deacon, bishop, or pastor, prophet, apostle, the Lord was indicting his church and saying that the church is ashamed to him because instead of having compassion for victims, or caring when he, God, the ruler of all flesh, is revealing the evil that men do in this nation and hide it behind the pulpit. The Lord says that in fact the church rushes to sympathize with the pastor. Touch not my anointed, they say. You don't have proof of allegations, they say. They take their sympathy and they cover the wicked. They cover the Freemasons. They cover the occultists. They cover the homosexuals that stand in the pulpit. Live your truth is what the church in America says. At least he's being true to himself. Did Jesus, did Jesus die on the, tr on the cross for men to live their truth? Is the Holy Spirit given for us to indulge our secret desires? Is it acceptable for ministers of the gospel to preach fiery sermons in the pulpit on Sunday and then be caught on tape sleeping with men for the rest of the week. So the Lord interjected. And what the Lord was showing me was concerning Bishop T.D. Jakes and another pastor by the name of Jamal Bryant. You will hear their names in the prayer call. I will do my best. I've done my best with the audio and I hope that it will be clear. The audio was much longer, but it contained information about myself, personal things that God was sharing with me. It also contained personal information about the other people on the line. And so I had to cut those things out. But the Lord has made me leave a little bit of it in, just so we in America can understand that while some of us spend our time on blog gossip blogs and channels getting information, some of us receive the truth that we have while in prayer while seeking God, not for mercy for rapist pastors, but we are seeking God for mercy for little children that are passed around and given up as offerings to these pastors. There's a prophecy from a long time ago. It's called No More False Prophecy. And God was saying that certain ministers that are standing in the pulpit today, beloved with millions and millions of followers around the world, the Lord was exposing these men and women and saying that they have sinful appetites, saying that they are almost like leprechauns and magicians in how they have cooked the brains of the modern day church so that the church hates to hear anything against these men and women of God. What you don't understand is that you're under a spell. You are, you are an idolater. You are a man worshiper. You're a man pleaser. These people have gotten under your skin. They've woven a web of deception around you that is so deep and so thick, like a mist, like a fog, 
that even when God is trying to wake you up and bring you out of that deception, you fight for them as if they are your uncle, your mother. But of course, for most of you, they are your online pastor. You don't know them. You've never met them. You hardly pray to God to test their fruit. But for decades and decades, the Lord was saying, these people had departed from the path of righteousness and they were now standing clothed in nothing but their fornication, their homosexuality, the adultery that they commit. Some of them he accused of drug use, some of them of perverting the scriptures. And the pity is that the church is so poorly taught that even if someone twists the word of God and give it back to them, as long as it makes them feel good and gets them hype, they think they're listening to true prophecy. True prophecy exposes what is done in the dark. True prophecy exposes those who go to the black mass and the black Sabbath. On this audio, you will hear the Holy Spirit revealing things that I myself had no knowledge of prior, except that he started to show those things in other dreams and visions that are on the Master's Voice prophecy blog. The fact that they even catch old people who are 70 years and older, that's right. They grab them and they chain them in underground basements. And the Lord says that they rape them hour upon the hour until a person's backside is torn up and the person becomes incontinent. They shed waste on themselves. And I saw the old people in shackles in basements. They leave them down there with the feces caked on them because that's all part of what occultists, Illuminati worshipers, and brotherhood find funny. I've been warning you about these people for years now, but everything, everybody thinks it's a joke. Everybody thinks it's funny, except it's not funny because the Bible says, because now the time has come when judgment begins at the house of the Lord. And what most people don't seem to understand is that when God starts cleaning up, he will always come to those of us that he has called to the ministry first. He has set us in front to speak to his people in his name. That comes with power. That comes with authority. That comes with a sense of responsibility, but we are responsible to him first. And when we begin to go astray and make sacrifices to the Baphomet, when we begin to go astray and begin to indulge our personal lusts, when we become licentious and sinful with craven appetites for young men and young boys, when we are males, when we are lesbians wearing tight body wrap dresses, when we are witchcraft musicians, who when the Lord warns you about them, then you get stung because you love them and you already know all their rap li lyrics. So how can they be evil? How can they be defiled? What you're basically saying is, how can God be right? And I'm wrong because I like them. So someone must be lying here and I choose God to be the liar. The time has come when judgment would start at the house of the Lord, but it's not gonna end there, Christians. If you are new to this blog, you need to look up several prophecies. One of them is called the end of the way of the wicked. And the other one is called the way of the wicked is darkness and thorns. In those prophecies, God warns that all those who support rapists, wolves in the pulpit, all those who make excuses after he has exposed someone and say, I need proof of this, but where's the proof? as if you ever saw Isaiah or Ezekiel in the Bible with a PowerPoint presentation proving the things that God had sent them to say. It would help you if you go and watch those prophecies and also read them on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog because there's an important key facet that most of you are missing. After God gets done cleaning up at the top, he's going to clean the church and purge it with fire right down to the bottom. That's right. It's interesting to hear about T.D. Jakes now, but the Holy Spirit is going to come and ask you why you have a vibrator in your home as a woman. Why you have those weird little balls that male and females are putting into their bodily crevices and saying that it's for health. 
God is going to come to you and ask you why you have porn on your computer. God is going to come to you and ask you why you are a gossip, why you are a liar, why you are an adulterous husband or wife, why you think that flirting with a woman in the office isn't cheating as long as you haven't taken off her clothes. You've taken them off a thousand times with your mind, but you still will make an excuse. God is going to clean up the leaders first because God is actually setting a precedent. He is saying that he's not going to allow the world to accuse the church of immorality and he sit there and act like he's blind to it. After he gets done with the leaders, after he gets done with the false prophets on YouTube that I have been telling you for years are going to start dropping dead because they have not stopped defiling the name of God. He never sent them. They went without being sent. After he has cleared out the pulpits, after you have seen the pastors dropping dead in the pulpits, as I told you in 2021, that in the middle of the sermon, they are going to have strokes and heart attacks and drop right there because the Lord is no longer going to tolerate inefficiency and Satan in the midst of the brethren. After God has cleared up from the roof, he's going to move through the ranks, through every home, church of Jesus Christ, and all those who are Christian or not, you will be tried with fire, especially if you live in America God is going to try America with burning coals of fire and only the true Christians are going to survive what is coming.